Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today. To always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day to always give him the thanks right now. Another day to always give him the praise right now. Another day to always give him the glory right now. And allow Jesus to move in your life in a supernatural way today. Because today is the day to give him the thanks and praise each and every day. Today is the day we want to say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm facing right now in these dark and difficult times, Jesus, I know that you're still in control of the situation. I know that you're still in charge of the matter. So, God, I'm going to keep my eyes focused on you and only you, Jesus. So that's why I'm going to continue to thank you in the process. Praise your holy name in the process and glorify and magnify your holy name, Jesus, in the process. See, praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. No, it's not. It's not a seasonal thing. No, it's not. It is an everyday thing because the God we serve, the God we praise, he's a big God. He's a mighty God. He's a powerful God. And he's still on the throne. Glory. Hallelujah. And he's still performing miracles and wonders each and every day. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. He is still taking care of business right now today. He never sleep and he never get tired for those who love him. For those who seek after him. He's never too tired for you. He's never too busy for you. He always has time for you. My sisters, yes he does. He always has time for you, my brothers. Yes he does. We serve a great and amazing and a faithful God. Our God is not too hard for him to do. Our God is not too difficult for him to do. And if you believe. All things is possible. All things is possible if you believe in Jesus. What are you believing in Jesus to do and, man and manifest in your life right now today, my sisters? What are you believing to Jesus to do in your life and manifest to come into your life right now today, my brothers? Because nothing he can't do. He know what's going on. He know what's happening. He know who's trying to plot against you. Do you actually think that Jesus is going to let that go by? Oh, no. You got to know who God is. The word of God says, sit still and know that I'm God. That situation that you're in right now, he said, that belongs to me. That matter that you're going through, he's telling me to tell you right now today, that belongs to me too. I got this. I don't need your help. I just need you to sit still and always do what you do best. Thanking me, praising me, glorifying me, and magnifying my holy name. Because I ain't never lost a battle, and I ain't never lost a war. I just need y'all right now today, my sisters. I just need y'all right now today, my brothers, to check your record right now. And check your record and see how many times has God ever let you down. How many times has God ever failed you? I want you to check it now. Some of y'all got a record a mile long. I don't care how long it is. I don't care how short it is. Ask yourself that question. Have he ever failed you? Have he ever let you down? And if the answer is no, you can tend to thank and praise him and let the haters hate. Let the enemy do what he going to do. Because our God we serve, our God we praise is going to do what he's going to do on your behalf. Let Jesus fight and defend for you because he's the best defender the best defense attorney in the whole world. There's no other defense attorney like him. There's no other judge like him. He's the only one. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha. That's what he is. A mighty and amazing God. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God is coming for you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. I just thank you, Father God, for this opportunity. I thank you, Father God, for the chance of a lifetime. I thank you, Father God, that you allow myself to, to fellowship with my sisters and my brothers today, Father God, in your house. Father God, there's no other place, God, that we're already to be at right now today, Jesus, but in your house, praising you and worshiping you and glorifying your holy name. 
Oh, Father God, this is your house, the house that you built on solid ground, the house that you built on solid foundation, the house that cannot move, it cannot fail, and it cannot be destroyed. Oh, God, I just thank you, Father God, that I'm able to be in your house today to seek you, to praise you, and glorify your holy name. Oh, Father God, this is your house, a house that, that Father God, that we're able to pray and praise in. Oh, Father God, we know it's not too hard or difficult for you, Father God, in your house. Oh, Father God, we, we, we thank you, Father God, that we're able to come together, Father God, and participate in your house today, Jesus, by honoring, honoring your holy, precious, mighty name. Oh, Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for this opportunity. We thank you, Father God, for this blessing. We thank you, Father God, for this word. We thank you, Father God, for this anointing message, God. Oh, God, we just thank you, Father God. We thank you, and we glorify you in your holy, precious, mighty name. Amen and amen. And Father God, I have a lot to be thankful for right now today. I'm so thankful right now today, Jesus, that you woke us up today. I'm so thankful right now today, Jesus, that you gave us another day of life. I'm so thankful right now today, Jesus, that you gave me and my sisters, my brothers, another chance and another opportunity, Father God, to get on our knees and go in our prayer room and to seek you, Jesus, and just let whatever it was on our heart to let out to you, Jesus, and just pray and worship to you, Jesus. I'm so thankful, Father God, that I'm able to open my Bible and read a word today. So thankful today, Jesus, that I'm able to be in your presence right now. I'm so thankful right now today, Jesus, that I'm able to say thank you for air. Thank you, Father God, for the breath. Thank you, Father God, for my sight. Thank you, Father God, for my hearing. Thank you, Father God, for my voice. I just thank you, Father God, for the roof, Father God, that you provided for me and my family. I thank you, Father God, for the food that you have prepared on our table. Father God, I'm, I'm so thankful today, Jesus, that I can just spend time with you, Jesus. Father God, I have a lot to be thankful, thankful for today, Jesus, that I'm able to hold on to your unchangeable hands. Father God, I have a lot to be thankful for, God, that I can let you know that I'm in love with you, Jesus, that I'm always going to continue to thank you and praise your holy name. Father God, I say I have a lot to be thankful for today, Jesus. I'm so thankful for the job that you blessed me with. I'm so thankful, Father God, for the vehicle that you provided me, God. So I can go back and forth to work. So I can go back and forth to the grocery store. So I can go back and forth, Father God, to rent air. Father God, I have a lot. Father God, I say I have a lot to be thankful for. Because God, a lot of people didn't even wake up today. Father God, I have a lot to be thankful for. Because a lot of people are still in the hospital room, plugged up to machines in the ICU. Father God, I have a lot to be thankful for, God. I have a lot to be thankful for. And Jesus, I owe it all to you. It's because your grace and your mercy why I'm here right now. I have a lot to be thankful for right now that I'm able to fellowship with my sisters and my brothers today in your house, God. The house that you built. The house that you prepared. I have a lot to be thankful for, Jesus. I have a lot to be thankful for. And I'm so thankful, Father God, for what I have. I'm so thankful, Father God, what you're doing in my life right now. And I'm content for what I have right now. I don't know who, who need to hear this, but it's time for you to open your mouth and let Jesus know that you have a lot to be thankful for. And just begin to thank him for what he has done. Thank him for what he has do doing. Thank him for how he's preparing everything in your life. Are you thankful for what Jesus has done in your life? Because I have a lot to be thankful for. Amen. Amen. And I'm here right now today to repent of my sins. And I need all my fellow sisters and my brothers to come together today, right now today. And just open your mouth and keep it real and be honest. Because Jesus already know what you've done. Yes, we fell short today. We all fell short of his grace and his mercy today. There's not one of us that's perfect. We all fall short. We all make mistakes. We all stumble. We all fall. But it's our job and our duty to keep it real. It is our job and our duty to confess and let them know what we did. Because you already know. Can you keep it real right now today, my sisters? Can you keep it real right now today, my brothers? Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, I ask of you in your holy, precious, mighty name to please forgive me, my sisters and all my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we done wrong in the sight of your eyes. Father God, please forgive me, my sisters and my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we've done wrong, God, that was not set right in your heart today. Father God, please forgive me, my sisters and my brothers, 
for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our heart that was not part of your Father's will. What we had in our mind that was not part of your Father's will. Wash us clean right now today, Jesus. Purify us through your blood right now today, Jesus. Clean us up as white as snow right now today, Jesus. And I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for forgiveness for our sin. Thank you, Jesus, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us a second chance. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us another opportunity. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us a new clean slate. You didn't have to do it for us, Jesus, but you did it for us anyway. And I just want to say thank you. And I just want to say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, this can't thank you enough for this awesome and beautiful blessed day today. I can't thank you enough for this word, Father God. I can't thank you enough, Father God, for this anointing message, God. I just can't thank you enough, Father God, for the air that we're able to breathe right now. I just can't thank you enough, Father God, for our help and our strength. I just can't thank you enough, Father God, for your help today. I just can't thank you enough, Father God, for the food that you have blessed and prepared and put on our table, the clothing shoe that you put on our back. I just can't thank you enough, Father God, for your words and your promises. I just can't thank you enough, Father God, for the Holy Spirit that is moving through us right now today. I just can't thank you enough, Father God, for the angels that is joining us in praise and worship right now. I just can't thank you, Father God, because you are a man that you should not lie, that you stand on your words and you stand on your promises, that you can't even change your mind even if you wanted to. I just can't thank you, Father God, because we can always depend on you, that we can always rely on you, that we can call on your holy name at any given time, and you will always be right there. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, for who you are. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, what you are doing. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, because you're an on-time God. You're a faithful God. You're a merciful God. You're a loving God. You're a God that's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. And I just can't thank you enough just for that, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough, Father God, how you're moving mountains on our behalf right now today. And we won't even see it or realize it. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, for our blessing. I can't thank the Father God for our breakthrough. I can't thank the Father God for anointing. I can't thank the Father God for our deliverance. I can't thank the Father God for our double portion. I can't thank the Father God for more than enough. I can't thank the Father God for our connection. I can't thank the Father God for the resources. I can't thank the Father God for the help. I just can't thank the Father God for the open doors. I can't thank the Father God for the door that you closed. I can't thank you, Father God, for the resources. I just can't thank the Father God for the rain. I just can't thank the Father God because the storm is over. I just can't thank the Father God because we are made it to the other side. I just can't thank the Father God because you're about to open up the floodgates of heaven and that you're about to pour out a blessing on my brothers and sisters that we're going to be able to receive it all. And I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you and I put you first place in my life each and every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. In your holy, precious, mighty name, let the church say amen. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say I'm ready for it. Hallelujah. I want to talk about today how a lot of Christians are still living back in the day. I'm talking about the days before you dropped your net down to follow Jesus. You were still living back in the days when you was messy. You were still living back in the days when you was like to turn up. You were still living back in the days when you was about that life. And a lot of Christians right now, you still living with your fist fight ways. You hoping that that dude look at you one more time cross at it. 
You want to put your dukes up. You wish they help her. Even roll her eyes at you one more time. And you be willing to smack the taste out of her. You're still living back in the days. It's still lingering. I need y'all to keep it real right now, my sisters. I need y'all to keep it real right now today, my brothers. Because the whole point, what I'm about to come from today, we ain't always been no Christian. And that's one thing Jesus, he already knew that. But one thing, we dropped our net down to follow him. He knew us by our heart. And he knew us by our faith. So that's why we depend on him. And that's why we rely on him. And that's why we need him as our savior. Because he knows he's still inside of us. Come on now, I need somebody to keep it real right now. I need somebody to be honest and say, yes, I might be a Christian. But sometimes, I ain't going to say all the time, but sometimes I reminisce when I was back in the day. Sometimes I, I, get, this, I get this vibe that somebody's looking at me twist it, and I just want to ask that brother, do you have an eye problem? I just want to ask that sister, do she have an eye problem? Sometimes when somebody rub me the wrong way, I want to go back to my fist fighting ways. Sometimes when, when somebody talk, when somebody talking junk about me, I want to correct them. Come on, somebody, you ain't telling me nothing. I've been there before too. And I always tell people, I ain't always been no servant. I ain't always been no minister. And I ain't always been no Christian. Sometimes. My mind go back in the day. When I was messed up. When I was about that life. It's like this one individual. He had the same problem in the Bible too. He couldn't help himself. Because he was still living back in the day. And Jesus knew. What time it was. He knew it. Just like Jesus knew what time it was with you, my sisters. When you want to go off the day at work. Jesus knew what time with you today, my brothers. When you when you was ready to fight today. And the first thing you caught you say, like, man, this ain't even me. So you went back in the day. When you ain't had no problem throwing your hands up. A lot of you right now today, you went back in the day when you ain't mind cussing somebody out or telling somebody off or telling somebody how, they, how you really feel about them. Come on, somebody. Somebody went through that today. Somebody went back in the day before they came a man of God. Somebody went back, back in the day before they came a woman of God. Somebody went back in the day. You still got doing fist facts ways when you was back in the days. Even though you dropped your net down to follow Jesus. And that's what Peter did. Peter still was living back in the days. It was still in him. And you talking about cussing Peter? About that life, Peter? Peter was telling Jesus, I know I dropped my net down to follow you. But Jesus, you know who I am. I ain't always been a man of God. Jesus, you know who I am. I ain't always been a faithful follower. Jesus, sometimes my mind go back in the day when I was back there cussing. Sometimes my mind go back in the days when I was doing this and doing that. But one thing Peter let Jesus know. He said, I got your back. I know that you don't condone this. But Jesus, I'm letting you know. I ain't always been a Christian. It's still in me. I try to shake it off, Jesus. But no matter what I try to do. When I was back in the day, it's still a part of me. Whatever it was that you used to do, my sister, whatever it was that you used to do, my brother, when you used to do back in the day, it's still part of you. It ain't went away. And the reason why I know that because the moment somebody try to tell you off, all hell going to break loose. You're going to put that switch down and say, Jesus, I got to put the Christian side to the side. I got to go back in the day because I got to check this brother here. I got to check this sister right here. They lipping off at me the wrong way. They stand me down the wrong way. God, I know I'm supposed to be bigger than this. God, I know I'm supposed to be stronger than this. But God is still limit. 
when I feel like somebody's out to get me. God is still in me when somebody's eyeballing me down. God is still in me when I keep hearing people talking junk about me. God, I try to ignore it, but God, but something in my side of me, it turned the light switch on, and I went back in the day when I was a mess, and I had to tell that brother off. I had to tell that sister off. God, I didn't mean it, but God is still a part of me. You don't think he know that? You don't think Jesus know that? And the first thing you say, I ain't always been no Christian. Because you got to think about it, my sister. You got to think about it, my brother. Before you drop that net down to follow Jesus, what was you doing back in the day? Before you came that man or woman of God, what was you doing? You was out there in that world acting the nut, acting the monkey, acting the donkey. Yeah, you try to bury that person. But somehow, some way, somebody always gonna try to bring that grave man or that grave woman out, grave woman up out of you. You try to keep them cool, and you try to keep her cool. But it's gonna be that one person that's gonna wake her or wake him up out of that grave. And you're gonna go right back to what you what you used to be back in the days. How I know? Let's turn our Bible to John 18. And we're going to read verse 10. John 18. And we're going to read verse 10. If you have it, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Then Simon, Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Melishas. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Do you see how fast Peter took that sword out and cut him, cut that man's ear off? Peter was telling Jesus right then and there, I know I dropped my net down to follow you, but Jesus, I'm still part of me. When I was back in the day on that fisherman boat, before I dropped my net down to follow you, Jesus, Jesus, you know I was a fool. Jesus, you know I was a hot mess. Jesus, I ain't always been a Christian. I want y'all to look how Peter did what he did. Je Jesus, Peter, were pretty, Peter was pretty much telling Jesus, I'm still about that life. I know I am a disciple. I know I'm a changed man. But Jesus, that part of me, what used to be part of me back in the day, Jesus is still here. And the reason why he was still there, Peter, because look how fast he took that sword and cut that ear off. Look how fast you went off the day. Look how fast that you were ready to fight the day. Look how fast that you were ready to tear somebody off the day. Look how fast that you were ready to cut somebody the day. Because you're still living back in the days with your fist fight ways. And you ain't always been no Christian. Sometimes when I feel that feel it coming up on me, my sisters, my brothers, I got to go outside and get a, a breath of air. I said, okay, LT. You can't live back in the days when you was a mess. You can't live back in the days before you drop that, before you, before you drop everything down to follow Jesus. Go get some air because I don't want you to go off. I see how that brother is staring you down. I know that you heard people talk bad about you and I know that you want to go off and I'm telling you, I say, Father God, sometimes I just want to snatch that brother eyes out of his socket. But looking at me wrong. And I got to catch myself and say, you know what? I don't want to go back in the day. But sometime, it might come out. And it came out one time, I said, my brother, you know, I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm going to be honest with you. This one uh, supervisor, she came down there to our department. And when she came down there, she was just talking to us like we were straight dogs. They know our name, ain't never seen us before, our first time. And the more she kept disrespecting us, I'm looking at the other supervisors like, okay, are y'all going to say anything? Are y'all going to defend us? So the more she kept doing it, at this point, I was getting like Peter. I don't got hot. I don't got fire hot. I don't took my sword out. And she asked me, son, what are you doing? I said, I'm doing my job the way I'm supposed to be doing. At that moment, I went right back in the day the way how I used to live. 
And the first thing I caught myself, I said, you know what? I ain't always been the Christian. I was just like Peter at that moment. Because I went back in my day. When somebody talked to me in any kind of way, I'm going to go off on you. I was trying to hold it. I was trying to keep it under control. But I couldn't handle it at that moment. I just burst because I couldn't take it no more. And some of y'all went through that today. You couldn't take it no more. How that person just kept staring at you. You can't take it no more. How that person kept disrespecting you. You can't take it no more. How that person kept talking bad about you, spreading rumors about you. You just can't take it no more. How that person kept cutting their eye at you. You couldn't take it no more. And you became just like Peter was today. Come on, somebody. I'm talking to some Peters right now. Be honest. Say, you know what? I was just like Peter today. I wanted to smack somebody. I caught myself. I was just like Peter today. I wanted to fight today. I was like Peter today. I wanted to cuss somebody out today. I was like Peter today. I wanted to drag somebody today. Come on, Peter. Jesus knows who the Peters are. He know that. Because you ain't always been no Christian, my sister. You ain't always been no Christian, my brother. So yes, some of us right now today, we still living back in the day. But our fist fight ways. It's still in us. We try to calm him, try to calm her down. But a lot of Christians right now today, we're still living back in the day before we drop everything down to follow Jesus. And that's why we need him the way we need him. That's why we depend on him. But he know our heart. He told Peter, he said, what are you doing? Peter said, Jesus, I'm still about that life. I'm going to defend you. I'm going to let you know I ain't no punk. I'm going to let you know, I ain't going to let nobody roll up on you. I got your back. That's what Peter was telling Jesus. And that's what you was telling yourself today. I ain't no punk. I ain't no sucker. I'm not going to let nobody disrespect me like that. I'm not going to let nobody roll up on me like that. I'm not going to let nobody continue to talk bad about me like that. I let it go on for quite some time, but now I got to say something. I let it go on for quite some time, but now I got to defend myself. I allowed it to go down for so long. Now I got to prove a point to let you know I ain't always been no Christian. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know who I'm preaching to today. But a lot of Christians right now today, a lot of people who follow Jesus right now today, we still living back in the days with our fists fighting ways. Come on now. If you know this you, Jesus quite understand. He's going to help you. It's still in us. It's a part of us because we lived that life for quite some time. And a lot of us right now today, yes, we follow Jesus. We abide by his rules and his laws and decrees, which he understand it, but he know our heart. But he know that part of us is still in us. He know at any given second, any given moment, that part of us that we thought was buried, it don't take but a second for him or she to wake up out of that grave, out of that pit, out of the dungeon. He knows that. Why do you think we need our Lord and Savior Christ each and every day? Why do you think we depend on him? Why do you think we rely on him? Because when moments come like this, the only thing we can do is reach out to him and say, Jesus, we need you. Jesus, help us get out of this moment. Because Jesus, that grave man and that grave woman from the rub is from the rise. And Father God, please, I beg you, I don't want to go back in the days with my fist fight ways. Because Jesus, if I got to go back to him, and if I got to go back to her, somebody going to be in trouble. I don't know who's going to be in trouble, but somebody's going to be in trouble. Do you see how that man was in trouble when Peter went back in the day when he took that sword out? Somebody was in trouble. And we don't want to be like Peter. Jesus, help us. Calm us down. Whenever it's about to come, Jesus, we need you right there in the midst. We need you right there at that, at that, at that very second, at that very moment. Because Jesus, we ain't always been no Christian. Jesus, we don't want to go back in the day with our fist fight ways no more. But Jesus, we can't help it. It's been a part of us. It's been a part of us for so long. Jesus, even though we don't think about it. But Jesus, you see how this brother and this sister just keep doing what they're doing to us. So Jesus, we depend on you and to help us 
to get out of this situation. Amen? Amen. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today, if I was praying this simple little prayer, that God is already working everything out in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, my YouTube channel is for this LT. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always continue to pick up your cross and follow Jesus no matter what. Always choose faith over fear. Always pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever see me face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my fellow sisters and brothers. The only thing I ask y'all guys to do for me, continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up to you. This seven minutes LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' holy mighty name. God bless you. Amen.